Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to lecture 20 of the course on multivariate data mining methods and applications. The title of this lecture is Introduction to Artificial Neural Network. Artificial neural networks are the computational models which are inspired by the working of human brain. Artificial neural networks can be used to solve many complex problems of machine learning, of pattern recognition or predictive modeling or classification. Therefore, artificial neural network provides a very powerful tool for machine learning and artificial intelligence. It has wide applications also, it can be applied in various areas. So, in this lecture, we are going to introduce the basics of artificial neural network and then we will also discuss how the architecture of artificial neural network and its uh, training can be related to brain activities. So, artificial neural network. As I mentioned, ANNs are computational models and uh, basically the architecture and the training process of ANN is inspired by the structure and functioning of the human brain for the developing the architecture of the ANN or for training the ANN, one can use the idea behind the functioning of the human brain. Then ANN are non-linear statistical models. Say, so far we have considered various predictive models or various classification models which are linear statistical models say multiple linear regression model or log it model or probit model. Log it and probit models are classification models and uh, multiple linear regression model is a predictive model, but all these models are linear models. But ANN are non-linear statistical models. So, if your data stru structure or if the structure of your model is quite complicated and uh, you cannot approximate the structure by a linear model, a simple linear model and then you also do not know the form of the non-linearity present in the data, then you can go for artificial neural network. So, it is a regression or classification model. It depends upon the objective for which you are going to use it. If you use ANN for the predictive modeling, then it is a regression model and then you can also use it for the classification purpose. And ANN is developed to encompass a large class of models and learning methods. So, in, it includes a very large class of models, it provides a very general setup and similarly the learning methods also and it is consists of graph and various algorithms to assess the graph. So, usually we represent ANN by a graph and then it also includes various algorithms 
through which we can find or we can assess the graph. Now, the characteristic of A n n is defined by three components. The first one is architecture. The architecture of A n n, it includes say the input or the, it may have some hidden layers how the computation is going on and then ultimately it has a, a output layer. Then uh, it is also defined by learning algorithms, what kind of learning algorithm you are using for the artificial neural network, for training the artificial neural network. And then it also involves the activation function which plays a very crucial role in artificial neural network. Then algorithm capabilities make ANN learn from large amounts of data and recognize complex patterns. So, there are complex patterns hidden in the data and usually in ANN we consider big data or large amounts of data. And since the pattern hidden is complex, it would not be possible for you to make use of some simple model to identify the hidden pattern. So, that is why we use ANN and then uh, since it is a complex problem, the training of ANN also requires the algorithms which have the capability to learn from the large amounts of data or train the ANN from large amount of data. Then it uses analogy of neurons and their connections. Neuron firing, activation functions and their ability to modify connections to form ANN algorithm. So, ultimately the ANN is inspired by the activities of the brain and uh, just like human brain, it should have the ability to modify connections to form ANN algorithm. Now, we consider the structure of ANN. So, it is originally designed to mimic brain activity. Then it has input or source layer, a layer from which where you get the input data and an output layer which is also called sink layer. After output layer there is no activity and in between you have some internal layers which are called hidden layers. So, you have input, in between there are some hidden layers, uh, you may have more than one hidden layers or you may even have no hidden layer. And ultimately you get output. And in between these layers, you are doing some computations. When the data enters from input layer, it passes through different hidden layers and uh, then ultimately you get the output. Then each hidden layer has several nodes. So, hidden layer is consists of several nodes and uh, through computations we reach to different nodes of a particular hidden layer and it takes records at the input layer and produces forecast value at the output layer. So, you provide data through the input layer and uh, ultimate forecast or ultimate output comes from the output layer.
then it has one input node pulse variable. So, suppose you have R variables, then in input layer you have R nodes, one corresponding to each variable and it can have more than one output node. So, ultimately the number of output nodes depends upon your problem. So, suppose you have classification problem and you want to classify the input data in just two classes, then your output layer has only two nodes. So, for each output variable you have one node, then layers are connected to each other by arcs and each node of a layer is connected with each node of its successive layer. So, suppose there is one layer with five nodes and uh, next layer has say three nodes, then these nodes of different layers are connected with arcs and similarly the other nodes are also connected. This is connected with third one like this. So, all the nodes of this layer are connected with the all the nodes of this layer. Values known as weights are assigned to all arcs. We assign some weights to all these arcs and then a function f known as activation or squashing function is applied to the input of node to produce output. So, you are getting some input from all these nodes and then you apply some activation function and then from this node you get some output. Now, we consider the graphical representation of the regression model. Say you have the model y equal to beta naught plus beta 1 x 1 plus beta 2 x 2 so on plus beta r x r. So, there are r input variables in the graphical representation. This is your input layer and uh, the first input variable is corresponding to this intercept term and we take x naught equal to 1 then the second input variable is x 1 and so on x r and then we assign weight beta naught to x naught. So, beta naught is the weight corresponding to this arc, then we assign weight beta 1 to this arc and so on weight beta r to this arc and then we do computation at this node summation beta j x j and ultimately you get this output y. Similarly, this is the graphical representation of probability model. Again you have input variable x naught which takes value 1 and corresponding to the intercept term it has weight beta naught, then the input variable x 1 has weight beta 1. So, beta 1 is the weight given to this arc, x 2 is the second input variable and uh, the corresponding weight is beta 2 and so on the input variable x r has weight beta r. So, you can say that this arc has weight beta r. Then we simply multiply x naught by beta naught, x 1 by beta 1 and so on x r by corresponding weight beta r. We take this summation, summation beta j x j. Now, here f is your activation function.
So, we use this activation function f summation beta j x j and this is equal to say z. And then in probability model we deal with the classification problem and if this z is greater than or equal to c means greater than or equal to some threshold value, then we take y equal to 1 and if it is less than c then we take y equal to 0. Usually when we include the intercept term here then we take c equal to 0. So, ultimately you get this output and c is the threshold value. So, you can use uh, this kind of graphical representation which we use in artificial neural network also for the multiple linear regression model or probability model like log it model or prob it model. Naturally, in log it model this activation function is logistic and in prob it model this activation function is the CDF of normal distribution. However, the graphical representations of a multiple linear regression model or probability model have no hidden layer. Now, there are three types of units, input units receive data from outside the network. So, the data is coming from outside the network and these units structure the input layer. And you have just one input layer. However, there are more than one nodes in the input layer. Then hidden units have input and output signals that remain within the neural network. So, for these hidden units which form a particular hidden layer, you have both input signals coming from the previous layer and output signals going to the next layer and uh, these are actually part of the neural network. So, uh, these hidden layer units they structure hidden layer. There can be one or more or even no hidden layer in your network even some of the networks have no hidden layer. Then output units send data out of the network. So, data is coming from input layer and data is going out of the network through output units and these units form the output layer and there is just one output layer. So, ANN has one input layer which receives the input units from outside the network. Then it has one output layer which sends the data out of the network and in between it has different hidden layers and each node of the hidden layer has both input as well as output signals. So, this is the artificial neural network with just one hidden layer. So, this is your input layer which has four nodes and you have just one hidden layer which has these three nodes and then you have two nodes in the output layer and uh, these are different arcs where you may have different weights. Applications of ANN. There are various applications of artificial neural network, uh, particularly in the fields where you encounter with very complex modeling problems and uh, then you also have big data. 
So, if the data follows a very complex pattern and uh, to train the model you have big data then it is advisable to go for artificial neural network. In e-commerce and marketing, ANN is used to automate complex decision making processes. You have to take some complex decision and uh, you want to automate the decision process so that you get better decisions about say marketing, sales, product development, etc. Then you can use artificial neural network. Customer segmentation, here also you can use artificial neural network. So, your input layer may include data about customer, say their demographics, their past purchases, online behavior, previous browsing history, purchase etcetera. So, these are your input variables and on the basis of these input variables, you want to go for customer segmentation. So, you can use artificial neural network, usually we have big data also and then your output layer is consist of classification of the customer into segments. So, ultimately using ANN you can classify the customers into different segments. Now, suppose your objective is prediction, predict which customers are likely to continue or stop using a product or service. Then again you can use uh, artificial neural network, say your input layer is consist of data on consumer past purchase behavior, customer service interactions, demographic information, etcetera. So, these are your input variables and then your output layer is probability score of the likelihood of to continue using the product or service. So, you have data on all these input variables and then you fit an appropriate ANN and ultimately your output layer is the probability score of the likelihood of to continue using the product service or not. So, you have two classes. Uh, so, if there is a new customer for which you want to do prediction, you just uh, use these input variables corresponding to that particular customer in your trained ANN and then you can predict this probability. Recommending products, say so, suppose you want to recommend some uh, product to your customers, then your input here is consist of customer data on past purchases, product reviews etcetera and if you have this kind of input data, then uh, you can fit ANN and then output is a set of recommended products or services. So, you ultimately get an output of set of recommended products and then you can recommend those product to the customer or services, you can recommend the services to the customer. Say you may recommend extended warranty for fridge which he has purchased one year ago to the customer. Social media, say in Facebook analysis, your input may be the profile or the interests of a person or his current friends, friends of his friends and various other factors. 
So, these are the input variables, the observations on which you have and then the Facebook uses some uh, trained artificial neural network. So, the first step is uh, to train the neural network based on given data and then uh, for the new customer suppose you get information on these input variables then you can predict the output. Uh, people one might potentially know and suggest them in the future people you may know. Say often if you are using Facebook then from the Facebook you get recommendation for people you may go for friendship. Those people may be the friends of your current friends or you might have contacted those uh, people through some media and Facebook has that data. So, it uh, classifies those people into the class people you may know. They recommend those people to you for friendship request. Then in social media, uh, they also use facial recognition. Suppose one of your friend has uploaded a picture which has uh, you also in the picture with him. Then uh, the Facebook recognizes the face and uh, it may recommend the picture to you to tag it or for some other purpose. So, what it does, it finds reference points of the person's face and then match them with data available in the database. Say so, you must have uploaded your picture also, so it matches the two pictures then it usually uses convolution neural network for this purpose. In healthcare, to enhance the disease diagnostic abilities of medical experts, patient outcome prediction and drug discovery. Say just for example, to identify tissue causing cancer. Then your input layer is data about the patient including medical history, symptoms, different test results etcetera. So, you have all this these data about the patient and then you use all these data as your input layer and ultimately you use ANN, you fit ANN or you train your ANN using this input data and ultimately your output layer is a probability score indicating the likelihood of a particular disease means that particular disease may be some kind of cancer. So, how likely the person is to develop say some kind of cancer say blood cancer or any other kind of cancer. Drug discovery, in drug discovery also artificial neural network is very widely used. Say we analyze the large data sets on the molecular structure of compounds and then it identifies the patterns associated with their ability to interact with specific biological targets. So, for a particular disease you want to design a drug which can target the disease. So, for that purpose you can use ANN. So, in this case the input layer is consist of molecular structure of compounds, their chemical properties and their structure features and output layer is prediction of the compounds effectiveness as a drug. So, personal assistance. So, you might have used uh, the virtual assistants like Siri and Alexa. 
Siri and Alexa, they also apply artificial neural network for natural language processing. A speech recognition is actually used to interact with the users and compose a response accordingly. You instruct the Alexa to switch on the TV, say. So, it uh, recognizes your speech and in fact, before that, it has been trained to recognize your speech and for training purpose, it uses artificial neural network and once it recognizes your speech, then whenever you instruct Alexa, after recognizing the speech, it compose a response accordingly. In robotics also, ANN is used in path planning problems. That is, finding a path between initial and goal, which avoids collisions with obstacles in the robot workspace. So, for planning the path, you can make use of a model which is based on artificial neural network. In manufacturing also, it can be used for predictive maintenance or quality control. In predictive maintenance, actually on the basis of uh, data and uh, using different statistical techniques, which include artificial neural network also, you want to predict any failures in the production process and if you can predict the failure in the machinery or in the production process, then before it creates trouble, you can go for the maintenance. So, predictive maintenance is uh, quite important for the successful manufacturing process. Then you can use ANN for quality control also. Uh, then there are many other applications in, in, uh, in energy sector, say load forecasting, energy demand prediction or fault detection. And uh, how important all these things are for the energy sector you can guess. Then in finance, for credit scoring, fraud detection, uh, stock price prediction. Say, suppose uh, some uh, customer is behaving in an abnormal way, which may lead to some kind of fraud. Then uh, it is important to detect the possibility of fraud beforehand and one can use artificial neural network for such kind of predictions or stock price prediction also, one can use ANN. Then transportation for route optimization or for traffic prediction. Uh, in self driving also, it is uh, very useful. In agriculture, for yield production, crop classification and disease detection, just like human disease, uh, you may be able to predict the disease for your crop beforehand if you have used the artificial neural network model. Then in computer gaming, uh, game artificial intelligence, player behavior prediction or level generation. If you have played any computer game, then you know that uh, sometimes it uh, creates some level for your game. So, it uses your past performance, your past information for level generation. It processes your past performance using artificial neural network and then it creates the label for you. 
Now, ANN is designed to mimic brain activity. So, first we consider in brief the structure of brain. It is consists of a cerebral cortex which is the largest part of brain and it is consists of vast network of interconnected cells called neurons. And then these neurons are the elementary nerve cells and uh, these no neurons form building blocks of neurons systems. And then you have cell body or soma of a neuron. Cell body of a neuron contains nucleus and two types of processes say dendrites and axons. Now, neurons receive signals from other neurons. Say just like the artificial neural network where a particular neuron of a hidden layer, it receives signals or in statistical terms data from other neurons of previous layer via many dendrites. So, uh, from each and every node of the previous layer, it receives signals or it receives data. Each neuron has a single axon, a long fiber that operates as an output device. So, just like the arc and then axon branches into strands. Each strand terminates as a synapse and synapses are the connections between different neurons. So, synapses form connections between different neurons and synapses are integral to memory and learning. So, here you have memory as well as the learning and uh, then synapse make either connect to a synapse or a dendrite or cell body of another neuron to terminate into muscle tissue. Then neurons maintain about a thousand synaptic connections with other neurons. So, a particular neuron has a large number of synaptic connections with other neurons. Then entire connection of neurons in the brain yields a rich network of neuron connections. Similar kind of network you get in artificial neural network also. And uh, neurons send signals via an electrochemical process and activated neurons fire an electrical pulse called action potential or spike of fixed amplitude and duration. And then spike travels through axon and its endings, each ending form a synaptic knob. So, this is a biological neuron. So, you have dendrites and then you have this soma part which has this nucleus and then you have different the this is the entire cell body. Then you have axon and then you have synapse. So, information flows through axons to synapse and uh, then these synapse may other either end up into another uh, cell body or these uh, synapse may terminate into brain muscles. So, you get inputs into synapses on dendrites and cell body and then you get output 
in axon myelin for fast signal propagation. And how these neurons work or function? Say internal voltage controlled by sodium, potassium, chlorine, etcetera channels. And these channels are gated by chemicals which are called neurotransmitters and membrane voltages. Then input sets synapses release neurotransmitters across the gap of a cluster of receptor molecules on the dendrites of the presynaptic neuron. So, this is how synapses release the neurotransmitters. Then dendrite receives signals from other neurons and soma processes the information. It is just like a, a particular layer receives data from other neurons or information from other neurons, then it processes the information, then exon transmits the output of this neuron. So, after processing the information, you get output and the role of exon is to transmit this output to other neuron and synapse is the point of connection to other neurons. A neuron takes input signals, processes it like CPU, passes the output through a cable like structure to other connected neurons. This is what we do in artificial neural network also. Say it gets input signals or input data and then it processes, it does some computation and then it gets some output and it passes the output to other connected neurons to the nodes of next layer. Then the release of neurotransmitters causes increase or decrease in membrane voltage via currents in channels. So, large positive change in voltage, it if uh, this uh, large positive change in voltage uh, that is membrane voltage exceeds some threshold value, then the action potential or spike is generated. Then synaptic connections between neurons are not fixed. And uh, these synaptic connections are influenced by the past patterns of neurotransmitters to produce complex behaviors and store memories. And then uh, synapses can be excitatory or inhibitory. By excitatory synapses, what we mean? If a particular signal is sent across excitatory synapses, it increases the activity of the receiving neuron. And uh, if the signal uh, sent across uh, inhibitory synapses, then it reduces the neuron activity. But in both of these cases, excitatory and inhibitory currents are highly correlated with in their response to stimulus. It is just like that in a linear regression model y equal to beta naught plus beta 1 x, then you have some other term also. If x and y are highly correlated whether positively or negatively. Then any changes in x is going to influence y also. If a, the correlation is positive then increase in x is going to increase 
y and if the correlation is negative then increase in x is going to decrease y. Then excitatory synapsis pushes neuron close to firing and inhibitory synapsis prevents neuron from firing. The status of firing depends upon the relative strength of two types of synapsis, how much the correlation is. If the total input signals received at a synapse of a neuron exceeds some threshold limit, it fires, otherwise it does not fire. It is just like what we do in log it or prob it or any other probability model. If the calculated value is greater than some threshold value, then we take y equal to 1, otherwise 0. So, if it is greater than the threshold value, it fires, otherwise not. Then brain learns by changing the strengths of the connections between neurons or by adding or removing connections. So, this is what we do in uh, regression also. We change the values of regression coefficients and uh, this is how we fit the model or sometimes we even add some uh, input variables or we remove some input variables and this is how we train our model. So, artificial neural network is quite frequently used to solve complex problems of machine learning and artificial intelligence. It is widely used in different areas. Uh, it is a computational techniques which uh, even takes care of non-linearity present in the hidden structure. So, in this lecture I have uh, just introduced the working of artificial neural network and how is it Im inspired by the human brain activities. Here I am going to stop. Thank you. Hello and welcome to this piece of literary snippet. British humour does not have a very high standing in the world. When people talk about it, they usually do so with a certain degree of disparagement. Yet all this is, I think, rather unfortunate because if I read out to you a certain section from Jerome K. Jerome's famous novel Three Men in a Boat, you will realise that not only is British humour genuinely funny, it is probably even better than some of the other samples of humorous writings that you might have read in the recent past. The story that I am going to read out is told by Jerome, who thinks he is suffering from some kind of a malady. I remember going to the British Museum one day to read up the treatment <coughs> for some slight ailment of which I had a touch. <coughs> Hay fever, I fancy it was. I got down the book and read all I came to read and then in an unthinking moment I idly turned the leaves and began to indolently study diseases generally. I forgot which was the first distemper I plunged into, some fearful devastating scourge I know, and before I had glanced half down the list of premonitory symptoms, it was borne in upon me that I had fairly got it. I sat for a while, frozen with horror. And then in the listlessness of despair, I again turned over the pages. 
I came to typhoid fever, read the symptoms, discovered that I had typhoid fever, must have had it for months without knowing it, wondered what else I had got, turned up St. Vitus's dance, found, as I expected, that I had that too. Began to get interested in my case and determined to sift it to the bottom and so started alphabetically. Read up ague and learned that I was sickening from it and that the acute stage would commence in about another fortnight. Bright's disease, I was uh, relieved to find, I had only in a modified form. And uh, so far as that was concerned, I might live for years. Cholera I had with uh, severe complications and uh, diphtheria I seemed to have been born with. I plodded conscientiously through the 26 letters and the only malady I could conclude I had not got was housemaid's knee. I felt rather hurt about this at first. It seemed somehow to be a sort of slight. Why hadn't I got housemaid's knee? Why this invidious reservation? After a while, however, less grasping feelings prevailed. I reflected that I had every other known malady in the pharmacology and I grew less selfish and determined to do without housemaid's knee. Gout in its most malignant stage, it would appear, had seized me without my being aware of it. And zymosis. I had zymosis evidently from boyhood. There were no more diseases after zymosis, uh, so I concluded there was nothing else the matter with me. I sat and pondered. I thought, what an interesting case I must be from a medical point of view. Uh, what an acquisition I should be to a class. Students would have no need to walk the hospitals if they had me. I was a hospital in myself. All they need to do would be to walk around me and, after that, take the diploma. Then I wondered how long I had to live. I tried to examine myself. I felt my pulse. Uh, I could not, at first, feel any pulse at all. Then, all of a sudden, it seemed to start off. I pulled out my watch and timed it. I made it 147 to a minute. I tried to feel my heart. I could not feel my heart. It had been beating, but now it had stopped beating. I have since been induced to come to the opinion that it must have been there all the time and must have been beating, but I cannot account for it. I patted myself all over my front, from what I call my waist up to my head, and uh, I went a bit around each side and a little way up the back but I could not feel or hear anything. I uh, tried to look at my tongue. I stuck it out as far as ever it would go and I shut one eye and tried to examine it with the other. I could only see the tip and the only thing that I could gain from that was to feel more certain than before that I had scarlet fever. I had walked into the reading room, a happy, healthy man, I crawled out a decrepit wreck. Our friend next visited a doctor and there he got a prescription which said to eat well, to go for long walks and not 
to worry his heads over things he didn't understand. See you in the next episode of Literary Snippets. Hi, my name is Gillette Sam and I teach sociology uh, at IIT Kanpur. Uh, today I am going to uh, tell you about uh, an important debate that is occurring around uh, the concept of globalization. Uh, now, uh, uh, within the study of globalization, there are two sets of people. The first set of people uh, uh, argue that globalization is uh, very real. It's something that is happening around us all the time. And in fact, it's something that is gaining strength over time. The second set of people, uh, and the first set of people are, are called the globalists. The second set of people are not so convinced that globalization is something real. Uh, and they, ref they are referred to as skeptics. Now, the skeptics argue that uh, Unlike what the globalists would have us believe, that there are things and ideas and people that are traveling across the world, across multiple borders, and that we live in an interconnected world, actually there are many parts of the world and many types of people who are completely left out of these kind of global flows. So they would give you the example of uh, typically indigenous communities who live across the world. And they would argue that if you look at the lives of indigenous communities, particularly tribes that are uh, quite isolated uh, uh, in terms of their physical location, their lives continue without their participating in any kind of global flows. To this, the globalists would respond that even though uh, people may live in isolated and remote locations, and they may not be directly uh, involved in global flows, their lives today are still being influenced by events that are happening at a global scale. Uh, you can take the example of climate change. So, uh, for instance, if, uh, if there is an indigenous community that has no contact with uh, anyone else in the world apart from themselves, uh, but they live in an area uh, which is experiencing uh, an increase in sea levels, an increase in the temperature. All of this may be attributed to people in neighboring countries or actually rather events that are happening across the globe. So in that sense, even though you may not be directly participating in global flows, your everyday life is affected by what is happening around the world. Uh, another argument that the skeptics make uh, is uh, in regard to what happens with the nation states. Now, initially when discussions about globalization started, and we are talking about the 1990s, um, the expectation was that uh, the, the nation state uh, as an entity is going to wither away. Uh, it's going to cease to be important. Uh, now, um, skeptics could point out to uh, the world today and say, well, nation states are still important. Uh, we still live our lives based on which uh, nation we were born in or which nation we have citizenship in. Their rules and regulations are still important for us. Uh, to which globalists would argue that this expectation that the nation state will cease to be important, uh, that itself is a fallacy. Uh, rather than facing a situation that the nation states state becomes less important over time, uh, we actually may be uh, headed towards a situation where in addition to the nation state, there are other laws which become important to our lives and they shape our lives uh, on an everyday basis.